Okay, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to our lesson, uh, which is the the lesson. Uh, Mr. Omar Sifuna. Uh, to start with, I uh, remember yesterday, uh, we were covering uh, our special group, lactating mothers and also infants, how uh, the lactating mothers and infants should feed to maintain their health. Now today I'm, suffer, I'm summarizing the uh, special groups by nutritional needs for people living with HIV AIDS. Now, who are these people? People living with HIV AIDS are people who have contract, uh, co contracted uh, the HIV virus and we call them HIV positive uh, people. Now, you find that this are, is also a kind of sickness which is also very, impo uh, very dangerous uh, if a person is living with HIV virus, then they should be feed in a special manner so that they can stay longer. Now, uh, what are some of the nutrients that are needed by these people? Uh, number one, you find that these people should feed on a balanced diet to mean the rule of three protein carbo, uh, carbohydrates and also vitamins must be in their diet to make sure that they are having a smooth life. Now, uh, when we talk about proteins, which are some of the proteins that should be included in their diet? Uh, the types of protein that should be included are eggs, peas, fish, and liver. Protein, sources of proteins uh, which are soft and easily digested should be included in their diet uh, to make sure that they are not having that rough time of digestion and etc. So what is the main function of protein in their diet is to replace the worn out cells. Uh, you understand that in component of blood, uh, blood circulation in standard 7, we said that blood contains four components. Components of blood, uh, components of blood we have the white blood cells, We have the red blood cells, we have the plasma, and we have the platelets. All these four components, every component serves its purpose. So when we talk of the white blood cells, it has its function in blood. The red blood cell, you understand its function, the plasma and the platelets. Now. Specifically, when you talk of HIV virus, this one is a virus that n normally affects the white blood cells. You understand the main function of the white blood cell is to fight the disease-causing organisms in the body. So when this is the soldier of the body, in case any disease coming to your body, uh, the soldier are the white blood cells. They fight that, or those organisms to make sure that the body is healthy. Now, when we say somebody has contract, contracted HIV virus, now the white blood cells in the blood are destroyed and you find that any disease can come and strike the body. So the body is very weak because the defensive mechanism of the body are destroyed. So when the white blood cells are destroyed you find that uh, most of the, these the remaining cells have a very rough work in the body. So those cells all the, so most of the cells are destroyed and now the proteins are the one replacing those cells that are destroyed in the body. Now, uh, carbohydrates, sources of carbohydrates, we have the oats, we have uh, the maize, uh, the wheat, uh, a green banana, those are some of the soft carbohydrates that are needed to be included in a diet of somebody who is suffering from HIV. Now, what are the function of carbohydrates in the diet of a person who is HIV positive? The function is, you understand carbohydrate is a type of nutrient that provides energy to the body. And these people are also working, so sometimes they have rough time in breathing, they have ti rough time in movement from one place to another for our daily functions, and also blood circulation, you understand, for blood to move from the heart to other parts of the body, transporting oxygen also needs energy. So carbohydrates is a type of nutrient that is providing energy for breathing, for movement, and also for blood circulation in the body. So if carbohydrate is exempt 
hundred in their diet, you find that they will have rough time in breathing, movement from one place to another, and also blood circulation. Now, we come to number three, vitamins. The main source of vitamins are vegetables and fruits. So you understand there are so many vegetables and fruits should be included in the diet of a, a person who is HIV positive. Now, uh, what is the main function of vitamins? These are protective feeds and they boost the body, the immunity of the body. Uh, when you talk of the immunity, uh, this one is the ability of the body to defend itself against the diseases. You understand the opportunistic diseases can come and uh, strike this person because the defensive mechanism, which is white blood cell, has been destroyed. So the immunity also is boosted. Uh, so, somehow little by vitamins uh, protecting the body from opportunistic opportunistic diseases when you talk of HIV you find that this uh, HIV is a disease that has no signs and symptoms uh, any disease is welcomed in the body you find that opportunistic disease uh, this person is coughing this person has malaria this person has typhoid any disease that comes in the body strikes it so those diseases are what we call opportunistic that is why a person who is hiv positive has no uh, common sign and symptom any disease you find that a person can uh, just uh, cough can diarrhea can vomit can have malaria can have any other disease that can strike the body because the defensive has been destroyed uh, next we have fiber which is also known as roughage it's very important we say the roughage or fiber is not digested in the body but uh, its function is to empty the bowel and uh, when we talk of empty the bowel uh, it uh, removes a toxic substance in the body and you find that it prevents the body from a disease known as constipation uh, constipation is a removing of undigested food material from the body system now fiber or roughage is uh, the type of food uh, which uh, serves that role and we say the main source of fiber or roughage is only vegetables and fruits which are also vitamins now we also have fats and oils fats from animals and oils from plants uh, is also another very important part uh, which also provides energy just like carbohydrates for breathing movement and also blood circulation and then lastly we have plenty of fluids uh, plenty of fluids you understand that a person who is suffering from hiv aids will have to lose a lot of water from the body through diarrhea and also vomiting so you have to supply a lot of fluids uh, which is in fruits uh, vegetables water uh, fruit juice etc so a lot of fluids uh, should be also supplied to this person uh, to replace uh, a lot of water which is lost through vomiting and diarrhea and also uh, avoid dehydration of the body. When you talk of a dehydration of the body, uh, we mean that the drying of the body that is. Now these are some of the nutrients that are required to a person who is suffering from HIV and AIDS another special group which was the last group now you understand the, that these diseases uh, bring some complication to somebody so there are some of the foods that should be avoided by this kind of a person now what are some of these foods that should be avoided that can bring a problem let us mention some of the foods uh, that should be avoided by this person who is suffering from HIV AIDS there are some of the foods or elements that should be avoided in the person who is suffering from HIV AIDS foods to be avoided by a person who is HIV positive. What are some of the nutrients or some of the foods that are, should be avoided to make sure that uh, this person is having a smooth life? Number one, we have fried food and meat. Number one, 
number one fried foods e.g. meat fried foods e.g. meat uh, when you fry meat you find that it can bring complication to this person in which way you understand that when fried meat requires a lot of energy to digest because it re requires a lot of energy to digest uh, fried food uh, which is uh, meat requires a lot of energy to digest and also we have uh, spiced foods number two spiced foods and acidic drinks why why should we avoid spiced foods and acidic drinks because it it irritates it irritates the gut it irritates the gut or the alimentary canal uh, unwashed or undercooked food unwashed or undercooked might have uh, might be contaminated eh? be co contaminated unwashed or undercooked food might be contaminated and might cause what we call uh, diseases or water upon diseases and then this person should also avoid what we call smoking cigarettes smoking cigarettes uh, why should this person sm uh, avoid smoking? Uh, smoking damages lungs. Damages lungs. And this person should also avoid drinking, drinking alcohol. Why? This one brings liver cirrhosis, also damages the liver. And you understand alcohol also dehydrates the body. The body. Dehydrates the body. Good. Okay. Uh, we have talked of the very important nutritional nutrients that are required by a person who is HIV positive. Now, there are also some of the foods that are also very dangerous if they are used by this person who is HIV positive. And number one, we have said fried and uh, fried foods like meat, fish, etc., which is fried. So we said a fried food needs a lot of energy to digest. So that energy, where will that person have energy and is already sick? Uh, the white blood cells have been destroyed. The person's system immunity is very weak. So there is no energy. So avoid fried meat. And number two, we have said spiced food and acidic drinks irritates the gut. When you talk of the gut, this is the alimentary canal or the digestive system. The digestive system uh, starts from the mouth and ends in, at, at the anus. So you find that that gut it uh, becomes irritates. It, it irritates, uh, making the person uncomfortable. Now, uh, number three, we said unwashed or undercooked food. You understand uh, what upon diseases. Uh, when the food is unwashed, food which is eaten raw, fruits, when they are not uh, washed, uh, they might be contaminated. Or food which is unco undercooked, uh, cooked but not that fully cooked, uh, the food might be contaminated and it might cause a waterborne disease, uh, diseases, typhoid, cholera, and bilharzia. Uh, 
which are some of the opportunistic diseases that affect that person. Uh, so avoid unwashed and undercooked food. Uh, number four, we said smoking cigarettes. You understand smoking cigarettes contain three elements which are very dangerous. Uh, the, uh, the tar, the nicotine, and also carbon monoxide. I talked about in the other uh, topic, air pollution, uh, the dangers of those three elements in the cigarette. So also it damages the lungs and affects the breathing. You understand the meaning of lungs uh, is the way exchange of gases takes place. So you will find that the person is lacking oxygen when the lungs are damaged. Uh, lastly, we have drinking alcohol. Alcohol is very dangerous to person who is HIV positive. In which way? Uh, one, we say it causes a disease known as liver cirrhosis. So the liver is damaged and you understand the function of the bile. Bile juice, very important, and it is in the liver. So when the liver is damaged, so there will be no digestion of fats and oils because the liver produces bile which digests uh, the fats and oils in the duodenum. And now, we, all, we also said that the alcohol dehydrates the body, makes the body dry because a lot of water is uh, used by uh, that alcohol. So these are some of the nutrients that are the some of the elements that should be avoided by this person. It can make uh, his life or her life short. Uh, that is one, two, three, four, five. Okay. From there, uh, we summarize the topic special uh, nutritional for special people. Uh, this one was the last part. Now I'm introducing the next, uh, the next, and which is the last subtopic under foods and nutrition, which is food poisoning. From there, after dealing with special groups, nutritional nutrients needed by special groups, I now introduce the last subtopic under the topic foods and nutrition, which is food poisoning. Food, food, poisoning, poisoning, food poisoning. Okay, what is food poisoning? Uh, food uh, is anything that is taken to the body and has nutritive value. So, food poisoning is an ailment, it is a disease of the stomach uh, that is caused when you eat food which has been poisoned or that is having, uh, that is contaminated or that is having harmful elements. So when you eat food that is having harmful elements, you find that you have brought a problem to the stomach. So an ailment of the stomach that is caused by feeding on a food that is having harmful substances is what we call food poisoning. Let me write. I say it's an illness of the stomach is an illness of the stomach which is caused by eating food having harmful substances Okay, that is now the meaning of food poisoning. Food poisoning is an illness of the stomach which is caused by eating food having harmful substances. Now, what are some of the agents of food poisoning? Agents of food poisoning. Agents of food poisoning. Uh, what can cause food poisoning? Number one, uh, we have number one microorganisms number two we have chemicals 
these are two main agents of food poisoning that can cause food to be poisoned so when we talk of microorganisms these are small organisms that can cause disease organisms that can contaminate food that can make can, can that can bring poison to the food we have fungi we have bacteria and we have viruses those are small organisms that when uh, when they are Mm, they are added or they have been put in the food that food is poisoned now it can bring a problem to the stomach and also chemicals so you talked of the acaricides herbicides uh, pesticides etc those are some of the chemicals when included in the food you find that the food is poisoned and it brings a problem to the stomach now I narrow down and talk about specifically talk about microorganisms before I come to the chemicals and then uh, we will be summarizing the topic as uh, microorganisms now how can microorganisms how can microorganisms be included in food and who is in who is bringing them to the food microorganisms micro organisms i said microorganisms are bacteria fungi viruses uh, which are included in the food they include they include fungi number two are uh, bacteria and number three and virus viruses those are microorganisms we are talking about when they are when they are put in the food you find they cause diseases we have food we have diseases that are fungi we have diseases that are bacterial and we have diseases that are uh, caused by viruses which is one example of a disease which is caused by a virus is corona uh, we have COVID-19 which is caused by a virus known as coronavirus and we also have HIV virus and also other diseases that are caused by viruses we have so many diseases that are caused by bacteria and we also have fungal diseases okay now this microorganism might be found in uh, some of the foods these microorganisms might be they might be they might be found in stale meat or fish contaminated contaminated water or undercooked food okay uh, some of these microorganisms the fungi the bacteria and the viruses might be caught in a uh, stale meat meat which uh, has stayed for so long uh, stale fish uh, contaminated water uh, undercooked food or food which has been mishandled by people who have not trained to handle food so uh, they might be found in such a, uh, things some of them can, might be uh, found in soil soil uh, like tetanus uh, tetanus causing organisms are found in the soil and also rusty places so these are some of the areas where we can find these microorganisms and are very dangerous uh, okay now we also have organisms like house flies uh, organisms like house flies organisms like house flies uh, sometimes they can carry these microorganisms from maybe the latrine uh, and uh, an, uh, an hygienic latrine or toilet uh, from there to the food so they are just carrying the bacteria or viruses or fungi, uh, fungi from the pit latrine which is not cleaned well 
to the food and then you find that the food has been contaminated now how do we call this this one is not a micro under the microorganisms that are uh, poisoning the food but they are the one carrying from the feces or from the pit latrine to the food these one are called vectors they are just transporting the microorganisms that causes diseases. So we call them vectors. Examples of vectors, we have the house flies, we have the bees, we have the mosquitoes might carry uh, such a microorganism from where they are to the food. Now, food poisoning occurs when, uh, how can food poisoning occur? You find that food poisoning occurs when you find that food poisoning occurs food poisoning uh, occurs occurs when occurs when poor sanitation uh, when we have poor sanitation when we have poor sanitation number two when we have and hygienic handling and hygienic handling of food uh, and then in number three when we have and a cooked food and a cooked food now food poisoning might be uh, brought by poor sanitation uh, the materials that are used to prepare food are very dirty. The material, the blades, the cups, the souffria, the spoons, the frying pans are very dirty. And you are just presenting food in such a uh, unhygienic, uh, poor san sanitation. When you, uh, when you serve food on a, a dirty plate, then you, are, you have done what we call poor sanitation. And that is one way of poisoning food. Number two, we have said an hygienic handling. Uh, you might have cooked food on a clean sufria or a clean plate, but the way you are handling that food, you are the person who is handling food might, might be one, smart, two, dress well, three, clean the hands before handling food. Clean the hands before handling food. So you find that whoever is handling food also can introduce the microorganisms or chemicals in the food. And number three, when the food is not properly cooked, you find that some of the meat from the animals is having the bacteria. So it should be cooked properly to make sure that uh, all the bacteria or the virus that might be found in the meat uh, is uh, really destroyed before you serve that food okay now that is the end of our lesson i uh, thank you very much at the uh, the bottom of this video there uh, is a test a minor test uh, that you have to attempt in case of a problem uh, just communicate thank you very much